Oh, the sun has come out. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very dirty with my April TBR. Apologies if the lighting gets weird throughout this video or if you can hear extra stuff going on outside. It's raining, it's gross, but I really need to film this. So we're doing this now. April is one of my favorite reading months. I love April because it is the first part of the magical readathon, which is a readathon hosted by G over at Book Roast that I have done since she created it. I think my very first year on booktube so it's probably been like five or six years at this point. I love it. I will leave her announcement video down below. I'll talk about it a little bit later in the video because of course like in the past we'll do my TBR basket first and then I'll go into my TBR for the readathon. So if you're here for one thing or another it'll all be linked down below if you'd like to skip ahead to a specific point. But I'm excited. I think this is going to be fun. We're going to vlog the entire month like I usually do. So before we get into any of that, let's take a look at last month and see, see how we did, shall we? Starting off, we had a recent purchase, aka last month, aka February, which was Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. Then we had go to the library and pick a random book, which I picked a manga, which is the first volume of The Ancient Mage's Bride. Then we had read my favorite author, I did The Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass. Then we had a Jane Austen related book, I picked The Other Bennett Sister, and this is by Janice Hadlow. We had a thriller or a mystery, I picked The One by John Mars. We had a cover by, which I did the first volume of A Sign of Affection. The next one was read a YA book, um, which I originally picked Air of Fire, but I decided to do a like, use my benefit, and so I just crossed this out and I chose whatever, and I instead I did The Gentleman's Gambit by Evie Dunmore. And lastly, read a contemporary, I chose The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. So, as of recording, <laughs> I have started The Other Bennett Sister. I don't know if I'm going to finish it by the end of the month, but I've started it and that's what matters. I'll get pretty far. I still have like a little bit less than a week in the month and I have the audiobook, so I'm not too worried about this one. However, I didn't start either of the Sarah J Mass books, which is uncommon for me, but I, I did other things. I had vlogs. You guys saw I did a manga vlog and that took a lot of time. So I ended up not getting to those. That's okay. I'll get to them at some point in the future. So no reward or anything for this month, which is totally fine. So let's dive into the first TBR basket pick. Pick number one. Ooh, a subscription box book. So the first pick is a subscription bo box pick, which just means a book that I can't got in a subscription box. So I'm actually going to do one from a fairy loot that I haven't read yet. This one came out in March of 2023, so it's been about a year, and that is The Seven Faceless Saints, and this is by M.K. Lobb. I don't know anything about this book per se. I basically, the reason I chose this is because my, um, library had the audiobook. Just, just to be completely honest, my library had the audiobook. It's kind of small. It's one of the smaller hardbacks. It's been sitting on my shelves. I really want to dive into a lot of my subscription box books, which is why this is a prompt here. This is a fantasy, I'm assuming a fantasy romance of sorts. It's a second chance romance as well. Um, we have our two main characters, Roz and Damien, and it takes place in this world in a city that is ruled by a disciple by the disciple of the seven faceless saints. The city is caught in a 20 year war. And so Roz his father was killed by the military in this world, and she is very upset by this. So to get revenge, she decides to join said military as a spy. And then, like I said, the guy, Damien, he is the youngest captain in this military, and they have had a past. Like, he left to go off to join said military, and she didn't wait. And so, now what that means, I don't really know. Maybe they just kind of broke up before he left. But... It's the two of them kind of figuring this out, but at the same time, it says here that a disciple has been murdered and they must team up to figure out the killer. So you've got a murder mystery element. It was giving me, you know what, what, what it was? This was giving me Crescent City vibes, the first book, but it's basically like our main two characters solving murders in this city. I don't really know about the Seven Faceless Saints vibe of it. I think there are more in this series. I'm not sure if this is a standalone. I'm thinking it's not, but... 
something about this drew me in all of a sudden. I said, let's give it a try. So this is a fairy loot book. It's beautiful. It has a stunning cover as well and hardcover. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see what this one's about because I have never once since I, since I got this in the box, nothing has told me to pick it up. I was thinking about unhauling it actually, but for some reason this month, it's calling to me. So we're gonna give this one a shot and see what happens. Number two. Oh, okay. Oh, the next pick is a best friend pick. So I've reached out to my friend Lauren. She'll get back to me at some point in the future and I'll plop that in here to see what she chooses for me. I am nervous because it could literally be anything. Like with her, I trust her wholeheartedly. The books that she has picked for me have all been really good, but I never really know what it's gonna be, you know? So I'm super excited and nervous and I just hope my library has it. Hello, future Kelsey here because it's been a couple of days and I've heard from Lauren. So. I'll plop our conversation up here because she just texted me what she was going to pick for me, but she picked Wish Tree by Catherine Apple, Apple Tree? Applegate, Applegate. This is a fun little, I was gonna say middle grade, but I think it's actually a children's book. It follows the perspective of this tree called Red, who basically like is a wishing tree. People come and leave things on their branches and they look over, Red looks over this entire town. And it's all about, Red likes to tell stories about this town and, and how this tree looks over and takes care of everybody. And this new family moves in and is not, it sounds like it's good. They're going to be like, there's something different about them and they're not going to be as accepted. I'm not sure if it's a race thing or not, but I'm curious to see how it's going to go. So I do, my library does have this one. So I'm waiting for my physical copy to come through. It is an audiobook and I can read it. I have the ability to read it both audibly and to ebook if the physical book doesn't come through. But I think I'll get it before the end of the month, so I'm not too worried about it. But this is a super short, like 120 something page book that I can fit in and I'm sure will fit one of the prompts that we've got later on in the video as well for something else throughout the month. So I'm excited about this one, so thank you, Lauren, for picking it for me. Number three. Read a book you bought new. All right, the next one is a book that you bought new. So to help me out this month, since we are doing a readathon, I chose the fourth volume of Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith. I think I put this one on my readathon TBR for August, which is the second part of the magical readathon, and just never did it. And for some reason, every volume before this one, I've read during a magical readathon. So it just felt like the right time, you know? And I definitely bought this one new. I think there are there's at least the fifth volume is out and the sixth one I can't remember if it's out or it's coming out this year either way I am very excited I love this it's a graphic novel series that is a reimagining of Greek mythology it follows the Hades and Persephone kind of story it has this beautiful art style I talk about it all the time it's so colorful and some stuff went down in the third one so I'm excited to see about the fourth one you can read this for free if you're interested in it. It's on the app Webtoons, which is a completely free app. And it's way more up to date than this one, but I like collecting them in these editions because they're just so pretty. So more fun stuff, but again, graphic novel. If I can get a graphic novel in this month, I'm gonna do it for sure. Number four. Oh, I'm having a hard time today. Okay read a shorter book under 300 pages. The next one is a book under 300 pages. So I was thinking this is great. I'll fit in a graphic novel or a monk or something. And then I saw this and I said, hmm. And this one is exactly 297 pages. And that is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. There's also, really what started this is there is a short story that is part of her Sorcery of Thorns series. It's just a book that has a short story element to it. So if for some reason I can't get the audiobook of this from my library, something happens and I run out of time, I'll switch to that as well because that one is much shorter. But this one has been on my radar for a long time. I actually, I think I bought this copy off of my friend Taylor. Um, 
And I really did enjoy Sorcery of Thorns, but it wasn't like my favorite thing of all time. I think I've unhauled it at this point just because like it was great. I enjoyed it. Someone else can enjoy it now. This one has to do with fairies and I am very excited about it. So in this world, fairies are not allowed to show like emotions. And so we follow our main character who is Isabel, who is a prodigy portrait painter. Um, and she basically paints the king. I don't know who he is, but his name is Rook. Um, he, she paints him with sorrow in his eyes and he is absolutely distraught by this because, oh my gosh, you should, you can't do that. And so he brings her into the fae world to basically stand trial. Um, it's like I said, it's super short. It's not like the longest of stories. I believe this is her debut if I am correct, but I might, I'm not, don't quote me on that one, but I have it and I think I should give it a shot and it's super short. And the more short things I can get in a month with readathons, I'm going to do. So this one might change later, like I said, to a different book by this author, but I'm very excited about this one because it was kind of hiding and then I found it and I went, ooh, ooh, I should read that. Number five. Ooh, a free read. All right, um, so forget everything I just said about being nice to myself because the next one is a free read, which basically just means I can choose anything I want. And so for this one, I'm going to choose Beautiful Nightmares, which is huge. Um, and so again, this one might be a prompt that changes later on in the month. But this is the fourth book in the Fortuna Sworn series. It is over 700 pages, 715 pages, and it's not small. The reason I'm choosing this one is, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit later, is one of the th side things that I'm doing for the Magical Readathon is you can get trained in dragon writing. And in order to do that, you have to read two books that involve dragons. And this world involves dragons. So that's why I'm choosing this one. Like I said, we might switch it out with something else later when I'm looking at my TBR and going, this is ridiculous. But I desperately want to read this series or continue with the series. I love this series. I've loved the first three. There are five out right now, and this is the last one that I currently own. I have them on Audible, so I can, like, listen to them whenever. I just, I want to get to them. So this series is one that I've talked a lot about, but it follows our main character, Fortuna Sworn, who is a nightmare. And basically what that means is she has the magical power to, if she touches you, then she can figure out what your deepest fear is and use it against you. And so she believes that she and her brother are the last two nightmares in existence but two years before the series starts her brother goes missing and everyone is assumes that he is dead but she will not give up on him and so she is confronted confronted might not be the right word but confronted by this fae who basically says hey i can help you figure out what happened to your brother but you have to marry me and she agrees and then it's so much more than that they go to the fae court it's a whole lot of fun stuff if you like the akatar the plot of the first book in the Akatar series, you'll like the plot of the first book in this series. It just gets bigger and bigger. It has to deal with trauma. I think if you're a Sarah J. Mass fan, you'll like her stuff just because there's a lot of themes that are similar. Check out Trigger Warnings, of course, before each book because there is tons of stuff in here. But things happen at the end of the last one, so I'm excited to see where we go from here. It's huge. I'm scared, but it's on my TBR. <laughs> Number six. All right, a book including fake dating or arranged marriage. All right, the next one is dating or fake dating or arranged marriage. So for this one, I'm so excited. I just picked this book up, so you will not have seen it yet, but it is Happy Place by Emily Henry, which is her most recent book, and it finally came out in paperback, I think, a couple of weeks ago. So I have my hands on it. Finally, this is the only Emily Henry book that I haven't read yet. I'm trying to get through her books ever since I've read Book Lovers at the beginning of this year. This one is definitely a summer read, so I'm reading it a little bit earlier than I probably would normally, but I'm just, I'm feeling the spring summer vibe, you know, like I'm, I'm ready for the warm season, so I'm, I think I'm trying to manifest it in this book. But basically we follow our two main characters, Harriet and Wynne, who are the perfect couple and they're part of this, like, really close friend group that gets together every single summer, I believe, at a cabin. However, before this year, they break up. And no one in this group knows and they end up going on this vacation because it's the very, very last time that they can. I think something like they're selling the cabin or something. I mean, it's not a cabin, but wherever they go to, um, they're selling the place. And so they won't be able to go here again. So they decide to 
pretend that they are still dating just to make everything easier and not make their last time at this place with all of their friends really awkward. So fake dating. It's like, it's a second chance romance, obviously, because they were dating and now they're not anymore, but it has that fake dating element to it. And I am very excited. And you guys know I love me some Emily Henry. She's one of my favorite romance authors. And I'm so excited to see where we go in this one. Plus, I had a one of my friends who kind of got into reading because I, I was telling her about some books, read this one and said it was her favorite Emily Henry book. So I'm excited to read this and see if I agree because I just, everything about that sounds good. Everything about that sounds good. But I also would trust Emily Henry with like anything at this point. Number seven. Oh, an A to Z book. The next one is an A to Z book, which basically just means I need to pull up a random letter generator. I did do this before I started so I could help plan my life a little bit better this month. So I'll put it here. Um, but basically I just do a random letter generator and then the book has to start with that letter. The letter that we got was M, which was much harder than it should have been. But I've decided to um, do something that we'll see if this bites me in the butt later because it's not something that I'm the most interested in right now, but I definitely want to read this because it's, it's a duology and it's the last book in a duology and I just have had it for so long. And that is Miss Rule. And this is by Heather Walter. The first one was Malice in this series. It's like I said, just a duology. It's a sapphic kind of reimagining of the Sleeping Beauty story. And the end of the first one, like I still have, it's been like two years, I think, since I read the first one. And I have very vivid memories of how that book ended. So I'm really excited I am. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitantly optimistic about this one because it's been a while. I think I'll try to find a synopsis online just to make sure there's no any like itty bitty details that I've forgotten about. But I've had it on my shelves for so long. I almost unhauled this at this point because it had been so long since I read it. But I'm not doing that. We're reading it. I found the audiobook at my library. We're going to make it happen. So I'm nervous because it's been such a long time and I don't know if I'm going to vibe with the writing as much as I did when I read the first book, but the world itself was really fascinating and I am curious to see, like I said, the end was such a cliffhanger, like dramatic way to end a book that it's still in here, which is saying something because I have the worst memory. So I don't really know. I have no idea. This might, like I said, this might bite me in the butt because it's not something that's at the super top of my TBR, but I'm excited to give this one a try. And it starts with M. So there we go. And number eight. Random number generator. So good reads. Random number generator. So usually this means I would count all my books and just pick a random number from them, but I decided to make it even more easier on myself. And so I did the same kind of like good reads number generator, um, mostly because my books are so scattered around this house at this point. The idea of trying to find how many I actually have stresses me out. So let's go take a look at Goodreads real quick and see what we've got. I did look at Goodreads and it says there's 440 books in my want to read. So we'll start with that number um, and see what happens here. 107. Okay, let's see if we can find this and it doesn't take forever to find. Oh my god, I'm gonna scroll forever. Okay. Oh dear. Okay. So that book is not out and won't be out anytime soon. So we're gonna have to do this again. <laughs> So let's go back and generate again. Oh, 324. It's much more, much bigger of a number. I'm thinking that'll be something much newer because the 400 is like the newest thing that I've added to my TBR. So let's see, 324. That's the right number, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, so the book that was chosen for me was Icebreaker, and this is by Hannah Grace. This is one that I think I had on the TBR for the August one um, in the fall equinox last year. And I just really want to get to this one. I finally picked up a copy. I did find it at my local used book warehouse, which I love. And there's just something about this that sounds interesting. So it's a hockey romance, which 
I should, usually I just stop there. Like you mentioned some sort of sport and I'm immediately out. But this cover is adorable and I've heard that the smut in this book is incredibly good. It's the first in a series. I think there are three out right now. So I want to see if this is the vibe for me. There's just something about this that sounds really interesting. So I do have the audiobook available, but we follow our main two characters, Nate and Anastasia, who are both part of the University of California, Maple Hills. Um, and they are a figure skating team and a hockey team. And I believe they have to share the, the, the same space. Something happens and they have to share the same space or something like that. Um, I think it's a little bit of a hate to love or maybe a not so friendly to love situation, but I really want to read this. I love a good contemporary romance to break up some of the fantasy that's going to be on this DBR. So this is the one that Goodreads chose. And um, thank you so much, Goodreads and Random Numbers, for choosing something that I'm genuinely interested in. <laughs> so now that we've done my TBR basket, it's now time to talk about the book that I'm planning on reading for my Magical Readathon. I'm grabbing my Magical Readathon thing to remind myself what I've done. So like I said earlier on, I will leave the announcement video down below, but I've done this for so long. I'm sure many of you know what it's about. I think it's one of the mo more popular readathons. It's a month long. It's basically you create your own magical character and you go to a magical school. That's it. In April, you have um, classes that you're taking. And so each class coordinates with a prompt. And then in August, you take uh, tests on those classes. And then there are also careers. So you can choose a specific career. And then there are specific prompts that you need for that career. There are 12 prompts total, plus a lot of extra stuff. She does quests, which are like kind of a read as you go situation. Um, some other side things, which I mentioned earlier about the dragon writing, which I'll talk about in a second. But I'm only going to go over the ones that I need for myself, which are seven, I believe. Just kidding. There's eight. Um, so the, I'm still doing the same two careers that I've been doing for a couple of years. Master of Elements, which I've been doing since she kind of revamped this a couple of years ago. And then last year she added a wild form druid, which I was able to get through in April, but not in August. So I'm trying again this year to see if I can make it through the entire year. So the first class I need is Elemental Studies, which is a light source or light on the cover. I'm doing Icebreaker because I don't know if you can see here, but those are kind of like the lights in the ceiling. I had Chris look at this just to make sure I was like, would you count this as light? And he agreed. So we're doing Icebreaker for that one. We have Shape Shifting, which is to read from an author who blurbed your last five star read. This one was tough for me because I have not had a lot of five star reads here lately. The most recent ones were Throne of Glass, which I've looked at everything I could find and was not blurbed. I can't find a blurb for it unless you were like the USA Today. Like I can't find a specific person who blurbed that. And then I found the one before that I think was The Measure, which was that sci-fi book I read a couple last month, I think it was. And there was someone's name on it, but I couldn't find anything by that author. I found an author who hyphenated their name. So it could be the same person, but I didn't trust myself. I didn't, I didn't want to assume. So I decided to go with the one before that, which was Love Theoretically. On Love Theoretically, right smack dab on the cover, it's blurred by Christina Lauren. Um, there's a couple people back here. There's another Jody Pico and Helen Huang. So I have options if I choose to not do this one, but we're gonna go with Christina Lauren because you guys know I love that author duo. They're amazing. And I have one of their books on my books I need to read by the end of the year. So I put Beautiful Stranger on this list, which is the second full length novel in the Beautiful Bastards series. Loved the first one. I loved there's they usually what they've done is they've done four full length novels and then a bunch of novellas in between. So I've read one full length and one short story. The first book was super, super smutty. It was like an office romance. This one, it kind of takes place around like the same family of sorts. This one follows the best friend of our main girl from the first book and then a guy that we were introduced to who knew our main guy. So in this one, we follow our main character, Sarah, who has just come out of a really terrible breakup. Her ex cheated on her. And so she moves to New York City and really just wants a fun kind of one night thing. She runs into this Brit named Max, who she's like, great, one fun night. This will be all I need. And then he kind of like melts her heart and it's their relationship. So don't know much more than that. Really like Christina Lauren. So here we go. This is one that I need to read. And it's on the TBR now. That was much harder to find than it should have been because I'm usually the queen of five stars. But for some reason, 
not lately. The next one is Animal Studies, which is a yellow title, which is quite literally exactly what it sounds like. The book, the color of the title on the book is yellow. So I'm going to be doing the third volume of Lumberjanes. And this is a graphic novel series that I really enjoyed the first two of. I'd like to continue with more from them. I think I found it digitally, but my, my library actually does have a physical copy. So I will pick that one up before the start of April. But I'm really excited about this one. I don't really know where we're going to go from here because the first two books kind of had the same plot. And we've now, I think we're going to be starting a different sort of plot. But it does take place at the summer camp where all these girls go to. And there's some fantastical stuff that goes down in the first couple of volumes. So I'm curious to see where we go with from there. But as you can see here, the cover or the title is yellow. Astronomy, which is a Zodiac rec recommendation, which basically... I went online, I can't remember what website I found it on, but I went online to like Penguin and all of these different websites that said like perfect books for Zodiacs. I'm a Gemini, so I looked up specifically Gemini and this book was on there. Um, so I can't remember again, like I said, I can't remember which website I found, but I'm going to be choosing Happy Place by Emily Henry for this. I'm, I'm assuming it's because uh, like Gemini is like the summer sign and our months are like June and July, but summer and um I'm all about me some Emily Henry so I'm excited about that the next one is conjuration which is a color wheel so I've done this one already I'll plop it here but I got this kind of like dark teal blue so I scoured all of my shelves I couldn't find anything and then I realized there was a book that was kind of on my radar that came out this year and I've decided to go with it and that is The Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal I've not read anything by this author, but this is their newest book. It's got some really good hype. I do believe it's YA, but it's YA fantasy. And it has to do with vampires, which is the reason I didn't put it on like my most anticipated of the year, because vampires. But there's just something about this that sounds really fascinating. So this book is kind of a historical setting as well. So we follow our main character, Artie, Arthi, maybe, um, who's a criminal mastermind, and she owns this prestigious tea room that's actually like a place for vampires to come um, because they are scorned obviously by society so it's their place to go and then her tea room is threatened what that means I don't know but then it says that she has to team up with an adversary which makes me think that there might be a vampire that is in this world it's like the seedy underbelly of the city it's giving me like old like Edwardian England vibes. I don't know if that's true, but that's the vibe it's giving me. So I'm interested to see how that works. But it's that murder mystery kind of element that is interesting to me. And then of course, I think there's going to be a little bit of a romance in this book as well. Again, I've never read anything by this author, but I'm excited to give it a shot. And there's just something about this book that sounds interesting. So there's like so much blue in this book, but I double checked and the, the, the blue matches this blue perfectly. So it's in there, I swear. And this is the one that we're going to go with. All right, the next one is Restoration or a book that you think could cure a slump. I've gone with Lore Olympus Volume 4 because when I'm in a slump, I don't want to read a whole lot. But the shorter things like graphic novels, mangas, things like that are what pull me out of the slump. And so graphic novel, here we go. And um, obviously I need to read that for the Magical Readathon because it's just, at this point, it's a vibe and I just happen to read Lore Olympus for all of my readathons. So I had to fit it in somewhere. Then we have Art of Illusion, which the, means you need to find the word game or play in the title. Again, a really hard one for me to find for some reason. But I've decided to go with The Long Game by Elena Armas. This is the author of The Spanish Love Deception, which I loved. And this is the start of a new, I think it's a new duology, but it did come out pretty recently. But it's sporty, which is not my vibe, but it's been compared to Ted Lasso, which... It's a show that I love. So it says here that a disgraced soccer exec reluctantly enlists the help of retired soccer star in coaching a children's team in this small town love story in the vein of Ted Lasso. And it happened one summer. Happened one summer is one of my favorite books. And also, like I said, I love Ted Lasso. But I also really enjoyed this author's previous work. So I'm willing to give it a shot for her. I had it on my TBR since like I started reading the Spanish Love Deception because I loved her writing so much. And even though it is like a sporty book, which is not my vibe, I'll, I'll like do it for the author. So this is giving me some interesting sporty vibes, but I've got a contemporary romance on this list and the word game is obviously in the title. And the last prompt that is required for my reading is spells and incantations, which is a random number generator title length, which 
means that um, I've done it already, of course, so I'll put it here. But basically, like I picked some random numbers. I think I did like four to 15 or something. And then whatever the number was, I had to find a title that was that length. And we got seven, which is like one of those weird in-betweens where I wasn't sure, like there wasn't a lot of stuff that was seven letters, but Miss Rule is seven letters. So this is the one I decided to choose for this one. We'll get it in this month, hopefully sometime. And um, I'm nervous, but excited. And then of course, I have some of the other books that I picked for my TBR are, will fit some of the other prompts that are required. There's gonna be some quests, like I said, so I can use some things for that. Um, but the other thing that I am striving to do is she also has these side things, which basically are like certifications and certain things. So like I mentioned earlier, I will be doing the dragon writing license. Um, and I need to read two books that involve dragons and watch one movie or TV show with a dragon in it. So like I said earlier, Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton will have that in it. But I also have Blaze Wrath Games by our Piero Ortiz. I can't remember exactly what this one's about, but it's like a competition of sorts and it does involve dragons. So I had this one kind of on my TBR. I don't remember who it was, but I saw this randomly and I heard someone talking about it and it sounded really interesting. So I've decided to go with this one. I do have the copy waiting for me at my library, so I can go pick that one up um, soon as well. So I'll have the physical of this one as well, but I do believe I found the audio somewhere else. So I decided to go with the, these two as my books and then I don't know what I'll watch, but I'll find something random to watch to make the movie. So. Those are my plans, like I said, for the readathon and for April as a whole. I was able to fit a lot of my TBR from my TBR basket into the my magical readathon TBR. I think there are only two books that I technically didn't fit into my TBR, but they both fit something else. Like I said, they don't fit the ones that are, that are required, but they do fit other things. Also, there are quests and stuff along the side that I'm. I've always started the quests and never finished, so I'm gonna try to do that this month but that's my plan for the month i hope you guys enjoyed please let me know if you are participating in the magical readathon what your careers are what kinds of books that you are planning on reading are you doing any of the other side things let me know all of your thoughts like i said earlier i will be vlogging so we will have four vlogs throughout the month to kind of walk you through what how my reading is going i have loads of time now so i am able to get through a lot so i'm, I'm i have some pretty high expectations for this month but we'll see you know things happen and i always have plans and then they always get changed so <laughs> we'll see but i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you're part of this awesome growing family i've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links so remember to check all that out and i'll see you guys in my next video bye <music>